my talk today is um, about applying evolutionary principles to the understanding of eating disorders. Um, in my view, there are a number of reasons um, uh, why eating disorders might, may be the ideal case study for the application of evolutionary principles to the understanding of disease and disorder in humans generally. I just want to draw attention to the core features that, um, uh, uh, that are common uh, to uh, anorexia, bulimia, and uh, subclinical forms of, uh, of eating disorders. And these are the drive for thinness, the fear of fatness, and behaviors aimed at um, um, altering or reducing weight and altering shape. Also, um, the female uh, preponderance of, uh, of eating disorders is an important um, feature. Eating disorders um, show a peak at puberty in females, but not males. And, uh, and um, the um, uh, peak age of onset uh, for anorexia nervosa is between 16 and 18. So these are the um, characteristics that um, um, uh, 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 of eating disorders that make them of particular interest to evolutionists. The first is um, that e they claim that eating disorders uh, are novel uh, disorders that have emerged in recent times. Um, also, that all eating disorders are more prevalent in Western and Westernized societies. Um, uh, the, um, the evidence also um, points to a significant increase in all variants of eating disorders in recent decades in Western countries. So, um, uh, and um, there is also now a, um, uh, a, um, a claim that the, uh, the increase in uh, eating disorders now uh, spreading to developing countries in association with uh, uh, industrialization, urbanization, and westernization. Um, this is a, a, a list of some of the better known evolutionary theories on eating disorders, more or less in chronological uh, order. Some of the evolutionary themes that arise from uh, the uh, epidemiological and other features, and also uh, themes that arise from uh, surveying the evolutionary theories on eating disorders include evolutionary mismatch. Uh, this is a concept that um, um, uh, those of you steeped in evolution will be familiar with. Um, um, uh, and uh, the, the issue of sexual selection and specifically uh, intrasexual competition, mainly female intrasexual competition, and, and also uh, the uh, the phylogenetics of the human mating system, and I'll be touching upon uh, each of these. Um, males and females um, employ sex-specific strategies to compete with members of the same sex, and uh, this can diverge in some of the qualities uh, they desire in uh, long-term mates. For instance, um, men um, tend to value youth more highly in uh, uh, in uh, long-term mates, whereas women value um, uh, earning capacity more highly in uh, long-term mates. So according to the sexual competition hypothesis, the female typical strategies for mate attraction and retention that emphasize physical attractiveness are central to the understanding of uh, eating disorder. And it's important to note here that visual cues are more effective at assessing a female's reproductive potential than it is to judge a man's reliability as a provider. I'm now going to state uh, the, uh, the sexual competition um, hypothesis. So this states that eating disorders are manifestations of female intersexual competition, whereby autonomous females of reproductive age compete intensely with each other in the novel environment of large cities through the display of signs of youth and nobility. And I'm gonna uh, discuss the concept of nobility and so forth in a moment, um, through a strategy of the pursuit of thinness. This leads to what I have termed runaway female intersexual competition, 
the extreme version of which is eating disorder. So it's important to note here that within the sexual competition hypothesis, eating disorders are not considered to be adaptive, but they are uh, a dysfunctional extreme of an adaptive trait. Um, the sexual competition hypothesis based on Darwinian theory of sexual selection, um, which has led to the evolution of the female nubile shape and the psychological drive to display visual cues of physical attractiveness, mainly signs of youth and uh, good health, and that factors in the modern environment uh, uh, have, led, uh, have intensified female intersexual competition. These include uh, um, such things as high levels of female autonomy, uh, socially imposed monogamy, um, declining fertility, uh, uh, living in large cities, and media images of hyper-attractive young females that are mistaken for competitors. So uh, I would suggest to you that um, the, uh, that, uh, the sexual competition hypothesis um, uh, has, a, uh, has um, uh, the explanatory power to explain aspects of, the, of eating disorders um, which other theories um, are either uh, only explain partially uh, or not at all. And um, they include uh, the questions, why are females particularly vulnerable? Um, why females of reproductive age? Why the particular geographical distribution of eating disorders? And why have eating disorders emerged or increased in recent times? Um, so just a word about the extended mismatch hypothesis of eating disorders. Um, uh, two, two groups, one uh, from the UK, Aitin and Ibrahim, and another from Finland and Australia, have proposed an extension to the um, uh, sexual competition uh, hypothesis. These um, models consider that female competition uh, is necessary but not sufficient, uh, is a necessary but not sufficient cause of eating disorders. Uh, Aitin and Ibrahim uh, consider nutritional mismatch to be the uh, missing ingredient, especially the consumption of ultra uh, processed foods. Um, Rantala et al. Uh, consider a plethora of mismatches, including nutrition, neuroinflammation, gut dysbiosis, uh, stress hormones, and others. They propose that the modern environment produces a fundamental, what they call meta problem, causing um, the mechanisms of uh, uh, obtaining food and those concerned with mating to act in conflict with each other, unlike what occurred in the ancestral environment. In my view, the extended mismatch model is currently the state of the art in uh, uh, evolutionary explanations for eating disorder. So, in conclusion, um, I would suggest that most extant, proximate, or non-evolutionary theories of, uh, on eating disorders have poor explanatory and predictive value. The sexual competition hypothesis has been supported by evidence from non-clinical populations and partially supported by one uh, uh, small clinical study to date. Um, the uh, sexual competition hypothesis has the potential for being used in the assessment and treatment of uh, eating disorder patients. Um, the extended mismatch theories are, or models uh, for eating disorders uh, is an extension uh, or are an extension of the sexual competition hypothesis and claim to widen its explanatory scope to include, in addition to anorexia and bulimia, uh, binge eating disorder, uh, obesity, and a range of other conditions. Um, uh, and these have considerable face validity. And I would suggest that larger clinical studies of evolutionary theories uh, on eating disorders are required both to test their predictions and to evaluate interventions that arise from them. Um, I, I just I might just kick off with one question, if that's okay. I think, like a lot of areas, I, I think the the clinical implications 
tend to to come down to oftentimes psychotherapy and uh, psychotherapeutic in, um, implications for individuals and groups. And you, and you've you mentioned that in your conclusions. But I was wondering as well, would you say, for example, you had a meeting with the Minister for Health in the morning in the UK, do you think that the evolutionary perspective could have public, public health implications for you know, things like media exposure, advertising, uh, the images that young people are exposed to? Do you think that we could inform public health strategies uh, in any way from an evolutionary point of view? It's an important, it's, a, it's an interesting point you raise, Henry, and, um, and the answer must be yes, although I'm, I'm, I'm very, very reticent and cautious about simplistic, uh, giving you a, a simplistic answer here to say, you know, if, uh, if we um, uh, discourage um, um, certain types of images or if we, um, because um, I don't believe that a, a, a one, um, there is any silver bullet here that will be, um, uh, 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 that will um, suddenly um, um, uh, remove, uh, let's say, the, uh, the toxic uh, effect of the media. Um, uh, uh, um, because there, there are certain aspects of, of, of modern media that are, are, are not, um, uh, are, uh, are not controllable, um, I think. Mm -hmm. um, but I think better public education about the uh, 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 about the harm that can that can happen. Um, um, I mean, but I don't have any um, ready-made yeah. prescriptions to say if only we we could do this or that. Um, but certainly there there are. Uh, aspects, but I mean, it's not just modern media; it's the social media now, which is um, which is playing maybe a, a much larger role, uh, and and maybe a much a much more toxic, uh, having a much more toxic effect on youngsters, um, with um, with the scope for social comparison, which is um, entirely um, uh, uh, you know um, hidden. Uh, from public view, but known to those who participate in the social uh, in the social media, unlike mass media, which um, of course is open to all, and you know magazines or billboards or um, um, or TV adverts and so forth. But the social media probably now is playing a, a far more um, um, harmful um, um, role um, in um, in terms of. Um, promoting um, certain types of images, certain social comparisons, uh, which may be intensifying um, intersexual competition in ways that we don't even fully understand um, yet. But I would suggest that given the fact that we, that this is not even part of the thinking of those in um, um, in the public health sphere or in uh, um, amongst specialists uh, uh, within the eating disorder sphere, um, maybe a first step would be to consider the, the, um, uh, uh, the influence of, um, or, or, or the, the, the significance of evolutionary ideas. And, and I, would, uh, I would draw attention to the writings of some uh, evolutionary psychologists who have actually tackled uh, uh, some uh, uh, of the areas of advertising and so forth. Um, uh, there's um, uh, uh, a guy from Canada, uh, Gad Saad. I don't know whether he, you, you, uh, you yes, uh, I've heard, yeah. heard his, uh, his name. He's written some really, really excellent, um, maybe two or three books on, uh, on the effect on the, on the evolutionary psychology of advertising and the evolutionary psychology uh, of, uh, of media images um, and, how, how that, um, uh, and how that can have an influence on people's behavior um, so that an evolutionary angle um, can be helpful, I think, although I don't think I would be able to provide uh, any ready-made um, suggestions to the minister.